few years. Stay your taste. Whatever you need to do. Just now's a good time. Okay. Well, all happy. Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord, for loving us today and to be in the house of God right now on this first Sunday of the new year that we can give you praise and honor and glory for letting us see another year. Yes. And we might see this year better things than last year, but God, Lord, if we don't, you said to go ahead and press forward and go yes. on and do the things that we know to do and see uh, all the heart that the Word teaches us to do and to give you thanks in all things. Not always easy, but praise God, it's always right. And, yes. and we just want to thank you today and ask God for mercy. We pray for these that's here today, and their families, and their home, their situations. We pray for those in the back, the teachers and the ladies class, and these others. God, just touch them and minister. Help us in this new year, Heavenly Father, look more to, to you than we did last year. Oh, and we spend more time on our knees in the word of prayer. And, and God just pray and seek to you. That we might yeah. find in the year of 2022 that we might find it draw closer to us. And we can give out a shout. Lord, knowing one thing that we're headed home. Whether we make it this year or later on, God will be all right. And we, as those song goes, it, uh, just stop by. Praise God on our way home. We want to praise you for that and thank you that we can consider those ways as we step forward in a new year. And Lord, to see you in this new year closer, uh, more intense than we've ever seen you before. And we'll be careful to give you the praise. Honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord this morning. You've been good. You've been good all year. You've been good all the time. Praise God. He's good. Yes. But in 145, we read those, and this is talking about the Word, and we've been in the Word, and preaching the Word, and teaching the Word right on and on, and we're still there. And if we stay there another thousand years, we wouldn't still have it all, but we have some money. Praise God, maybe we'd have more of it. Yes. <clears throat> but in this one, in 145, the, the psalmist here is crying for deliverance. He needs some help, and we see that all along. We see it in the Psalms. We see it in David's writings and all these in the psalmist here. Uh, Cry for deliverance because the psalmist it, it kept his word. He's, he, he's, he's pressing on God. You know, I'm keeping your word. I want you to hear me in all these things. You say that might be a little forward. No, it's not. About God. <laughs> Anything wrong with bragging if you're bragging on God. When you're bragging on self, it don't do a whole lot. It don't help our strength in anybody. So in this <clears throat> reading this morning, he said, I cried with my whole heart, hear me, O Lord, I will keep thy statutes. He said, I cried unto thee, save me, and I shall keep thy testimonies. He says in 147, I prevented the dawning of the morning and cried, I hope, I hope in, listen, thy word, praise yes. God. Boy, I, I prevented the dawning, he said. He said, my eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate in thy word. Or taking the time, spending the time. You know, this is the thing about it. We've got as much time as we've got. It's a matter of taking time for what's necessary yes. in these days. We do everything we want to, but we let these things yes. slide. And that's the easiest thing because they are work, they are labor when you go in prayer. When you Amen. pray like this song says, he says, I cried with my whole heart. With everything I had, I was crying out to God. And that's when we, he'll hear us. That's when the answers will come. That's when we'll be strengthened and encouraged in the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. He says, hear my voice according unto thy loving kindness. O Lord, quicken me according to thy judgment. He said, hear me. Lord, hear my voice. He said, just hear me. Praise God, according to thy loving kindness. Why would he hear us? Because he loves us. Yes. And we're his, praise God. He's ours. And we can depend on him. He said, they, they draw nigh that follow after mischief. They are far from the law. He says, that enemy is coming. He's right there on him. He needs some help, praise God, just like we do today, because that enemy is out there, and he's seeking to destroy, divide, and conquer, whatever, whoever he can. Yes. He said in 151, Thy art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are true. 
even though that end is coming on and he's coming fast, reach God. He said, Thou art near, O Lord, our protection, our keeper, our sustainer. He's there, praise God, and all thy commandments are true. And in 152, he says, Concerning thy testimonies, I have known of old that thou hast founded them forever. Praise God. Concerning thy testimonies. And he's talking about there that thing of prevent. We look out preventing the dawning of the day. It says, uh, uh, wait before the dawn. Getting up early. You know, see the dawn. I, I prevented it. I got there before the dawn. Did. Yes. And so he's just, that's the way the writer puts it here in the King James. Yes. And he says this. I want to read uh, some clarity on it. Then we're going to talk on it a little bit. A cry for deliverance from the psalmist here. And in 145, he said this. He said, Lord, I call to you with all my heart, with everything that I have, my whole being. And he says, answer me. He says, answer me and I will keep your commands and statutes. He's already keeping them. He knows he's keeping them. And he's letting God know he's keeping them. And I will keep them. See, that's the thing that we need to be committed to the scriptures of God. That we're going to study the scriptures. We're going to learn the scriptures. And we're going to know the scriptures. You say, I can't remember. I can't either. But I praise God they're in their heart. We hide it in a heart that we not sin against God. And they'll be there. I've seen them jump out right sometimes in the conversation. I thank God for that. But here he's talking to the very thing. Deliverance comes from God and Him alone. But He's our sustainer. He's that Savior that out of reach down. When that enemy comes, He's the one that will lift us up and protect us along this journey. He says, when we pray with all of our heart, See, we come sometimes, we want to pray, but we pray half-hearted. Our heart's not all in it. We're not having that whole heart. We're coming and saying prayer. And those words are not really any good. They don't produce anything if we don't have a whole heart. This repetitive thing that we do, and we're all guilty of it, praise yes. God, because it's part of us. Yes. It's part of our vocabulary, the way we do. And those things are important, what we pray for. Yes. But we need to pray for it with a whole heart. In Psalms 5 and 3 there, he says this, he says, My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord. He says, In the morning will I direct my prayer yes. to, to God. I'll direct it. He says, My voice shall thou hear in the morning. Boy, that's something. Yes. You hear him of the morning. Or you'll hear through the Word, through the Spirit, through nature. We hear him and see him a lot of times and don't even recognize that's my Lord. That's my Lord. That's my Savior along trying to show me something, trying to teach me something, trying to encourage me along this way. Not to neglect to see him. But he says, My boy, shall I hear in the morning? Praise God for the morning. O oh Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. Praise God. I pray. This word will keep us looking up. It will keep us looking toward heaven. Looking toward home. That heavenly city. Who built and maker is God. He says, listen in 146. He's talking about this. He says, I call to you. The psalmist says, Lord, I, I call to you. Save me so I can obey your rule. Save me, Lord. So I can obey those testimonies. Those rules that you set forth. Then I can know them. And I recognize them. If I know them, then I, I, I'll do them. See, that's the thing about we need to be doers of the word and not hearers. We've heard enough Amen. to feel no telling what. But listen, what are we doing with it? Yes. What are we doing with the word of God? We say, well, we know it says this, but I just, you know. So that's our thought. It's not God. The word is true. It never changes. Yes. God is the same always. He says, I call to you and save me so I can obey your rules. Needing God to save Needing God to deliver, hallelujah, in a place where nothing else matters, praise God. Saving can only be done by God. Yes. Salvation is of the Lord. And we've heard that said it over and over and over. If we could get to understand, that's, that's our Savior. That's our Lord Jesus Christ that come to us in our weakest moments when those enemies compress us about. He said, I wake up early in the morning. And he said, I cry. He said, I, I cry out early in the morning and I hope, praise God, in your word. He said, I hope in your word. 
about something the whole way. If we can realize the importance of the Word, to reverence the Word of God, and to understand it. You know, there's some that can memorize. Some have got that photographic memory that can read it. And I, say, I can't do that. I have to study it, then I forget it by the time I think I got it. And you know, and that's just comes with aging, but I wasn't always good at that anyway. So he said, in Psalms 88 and 13, he says this, But unto thee have I cried, O Lord, and in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. He says, but unto you, he said, I wake up. I wake up early in the morning and I cry out. And I hope, praise God. And I hope, he says, but I, unto thee I cry, O Lord, in the morning. In the morning, praise God. Shall my prayer prevent thee. Hallelujah. Then in 148, it kind of cleared up. He says, I stay awake. I stay awake all night long. I just, I just stay awake. Why do you stay awake, Psalmist? He says, so I can think about, praise God, the promises of God, about the Word of God that I can think on, that I can meditate on, that I can study, that I can know them. They're closer to me. Praise God. Yes. One of the hardest things, easiest things to slip away from us than anything else. In 149, he just says this. He says, listen to me. He says, listen to me because of your love. His son is just talking to him. He said, because of your love. He said, Lord, give me, give me life. Give me existence by your laws and by your judgments. He says, give me that life. In the next verse, he says, those who love evil, he said, they're close. They're right here upon me. Oh, yeah. And therefore from God, therefore from the teaching, therefore from the law, therefore from Obedience to the Word of God. They are enemies of God. And he said in 151, But Lord, he says, You're near. You're so near. Right now, I've got nothing to pray about. And he says, All your commandments are true. That you're protected. Take care of your own. And in 52, he says, Long ago, way back yonder, he said, I learned from your rules. I learned from your testimonies. I learned from your word that you made them. To continue, listen, forever. Yes. Forever. In Luke 21 and 33, he says this. He says, heaven and earth shall pass away. He says, but my word shall not pass away. He says in 119, his word is very pure. It's settled in heaven. It will never pass away. This will pass away. All this will pass away. All of you will pass away. Praise God, but God's word will never pass away. It's settled. So there's some things that stay and settle in the things of God. Always will be. In 145 and 146, and just speaking on some of these verses. In 145 146 kind of uh, goes together. They're kind of lumped together. He says he prayed. <coughs> I've read some studies on this. And he prayed with all his heart, with his heart. See, this is that serious praying that we're talking about. That's that praying that you get along in your prayer closet sometimes. And there's a conviction or something comes over you that you begin to pray. And we pray, praise God, to we we see it through sometimes. And sometimes something happens and it breaks us like that. And we get up and walk off without it. And we see in Little Air's Mission, and we've seen some young men in the altar here. We see them in some teeth meetings, praise God, that begin to cry out, I'm not thinking here, God. To your blessing. Yes. I'm not leaving here. God, to your blessing. You bless them. I'm sure he did. Yes. Are they doing? That's up to them. Yes. See, that's the thing about it. But he prayed with his whole heart. And this is serious. When you pray with all your heart. And it's a, a labor. And it's a labor sometimes. Those of us that get out and work tough, we'd rather be out there using a shovel than trying to get aside to pray. Yes. And labor for some uh, uh, prayer. Bread in the flesh, not in the heart. It's just words spoken without any power. They're lost labor. They're just things that you put aside that it doesn't amount to anything. But keep on keeping on. Don't give up. Think about reading the word. I don't understand. Keep reading it. Yes. Praise God. Ask God. I don't understand it. I need it clarified. 
he can clarify it by the power the Holy Ghost that lives in it. He's the, he's the one of truth. He's the spirit of truth. He's the spirit of comfort. Why do we comfort? Because we know the truth that we're comforted in Christ Jesus. And he says, words are spoken without power here. He's crying as one in earnest. He cried, desiring to be heard of God. And just to be heard. Well, that's the big thing. God, if you turn your face, if you hear my voice, if you just hear me, praise yes. God. See, that's the thing about it. God the Father is, is our Father. As believers, He's our Father. Where should we go when we're in trouble? When we hurt Him or when problems of this life comes our way or when we messed up somewhere along the journey? Where do we go? We go, praise God, to the Father. Yes. Our Father knows our cares. Listen, and He's the only one that can help us with these cares to set us straight and to give us direction and give us encouragement along the way. And a lot of times when you ask forgiveness or something, you can feel that presence of God knowing in your heart that you said something or done something uh, 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 along the way. And the more you sweep it under the rug, praise God, the further away you get from it, but it's still there. Nobody's moved it. It's still yours. And that's the thing with sin in the heart. That breaks communication with God, just that queen is. And we sin against God. That's why we need to pray and have that repentant heart that's not ashamed, not afraid, not fearful to get up in, up in the altar or at home and bow down and say, God, I've messed up. See, He already knows it, but He will shoot up. Confess it. Admit it. When that conviction comes, we will too. He can't and will save us and help us. See, salvation should make us want to serve God. See, not only God but others when we're saved. Salvation, praise God, is we're saved to what? To serve. That's what we're saved for, to serve. Not to be, uh, do nothing and sit there and let things go by. We are to serve one another. Serve God yes. first and all these others we come serving them too. In 147 and 148, he says this. <clears throat> the psalmist hope in God's word. That's his hope. That's where it's placed. That's where he's looking forward to that word to give him that answer which encouraged him to continue instant in prayer. And, and we we preached and talked this all along the way. We've heard it here over so many times about the testimony, about prayer, about, about praise. These things that, that will encourage us, but that, that enlighten us of, of the very strength of God, how he shows us that strength and that encouragement. His answer didn't come Immediately, he cried and he hoped. And sometimes, our, most of the time, won't come like that. It can. God can do it just like that, but he don't have to. Because his time is right. It might be tomorrow, the next day. It might be years down the road. It may be a long time. See, that's why he says, keep on keeping on. Keep on praying. The word there is to pray. Yes. One for another. How long? Just continually. Just keep on keeping on praying. One for the but I prayed for him for 20 years. Keep on praying. Yes. Because that one day, that one time, yes. maybe even the time. His answer didn't come immediately, but he cried and he, and he hoped. And, and meditation, he's talking about, in God's Word is a good thing. We talked about that a week or two ago. At meditation, thinking on the good things. We think on the things that we love, and we love to think on them. If we're off out there and we're thinking about our spouse, we, we love them. We think about them. We want to be with them. That's the continuous thing. Reading and study for the child of God is a must. Yes. If we're the growing grace. It's not always the easiest thing. It's not always it's a lot easier said to hear somebody else that I can depend on. That's good. But if we're the growing grace, we need to study. We need to read. And we need to Meditate on the things of God. His precious word. If our first thoughts in the morning be of God, listen, they'll keep us all day long. 
See, that's the thing about it, because when you're of the morning, when you arrive, you know you, you need your coffee, you need to get the table a little bit. That's most of us do. Uh, but the thing about it is that should be we get up praising God. Yes. We get up praising God in our mind and our thought. We may not jump high too high in terms of it, but if we can just have it in our heart, praising Him along the way. If our thoughts, our first thoughts is on Him. If our thoughts we lay down and be like that, we think about it. Or you've been praying, you know, along the way at night and all of a sudden you're going to sleep. You wake up sometimes in the night or in the morning you say, my yes, God says that's all right. I remember, I remember Mama, and when I go there, Paul, sometimes, and, and I've called her several times with her Bible in the lap, she'd be asleep. And it would be an embarrassing for her. She'd tell me, she said, I don't know why I do that. I said, that's all right, Mama. You got the word. You're holding the word. That's You're reading the word, and all of a sudden it puts you to sleep. You need that sleep. That's okay. Amen. But she, it got me, it, it, it embarrassed. And I understand kind of what she's talking about now. And I get to read it, and, get the, and I get the nod. And I'm very careful because it brings peace to me. But more than that, this oasis says, you know, you need to lay down and take a nap. But it's a good thing to sleep in the Lord. He says the thing about it, but I remember several times, uh, and I talked to her about it, but she, it's a good thing we you know, have that big old Bible laid out in her lap. She'd just be like that. And I thank God for that. Remember, yes. remember that if we can hear it. During the day, we see that. But early morning, you, you see the psalmist and David, whether this be him, but David and his psalms and all, before they raise early morning, I give God praise for the Lord. And many of you get up early and, and enjoy that. And, and, and we do too. We get up pretty early, but we don't get out as early as we used to. It's hard to stumble out, but we thank God that we can. But at the end of 147 48, there, they kind of kind of ride together there, regardless of what comes or goes. Even in, in the night watches or the night season, that called, when you wake from a sleep, the psalmist listen. He would rather meditate. He would he had rather meditate and pray than turn over and go back to sleep. Well, can we attest to that? I can't. I have you have to roll over and go back to sleep. But he says the thing about it, but there's some time that something will wake you up in the night hours when you're up and around, says you need to pray. You need to meditate on this thing. What about this thing? And if we do that, it'll be all right come morning time. But sometimes we just rather go over and go back to sleep. And the psalmist here says, It is better to take time from sleep than not to find time for prayer. See, that's the thing about it. If we have to take our time of prayer away from the sleep, that's all right. Because we can do that, and, and you remember, and, and, and back in the years there, and, and I remember uh, a lot of times, you'd have, all of a sudden you'd get a call, or you'd have to get ready for a word real quick, and sometimes you have what we do at burn the midnight oil. Yeah. And that sometimes God would give you the, the best message or the best yeah. words uh, by having the struggle for it, and all of a sudden you'd sometimes say, well, I just can't get that, and there it is. Yeah. He said, you've got it. You know, here's what you need to be looking at. See, it's not going to bother God at all. Because if you wake up in the night at 2 or 3 in the morning, it doesn't matter. You can speak to Him any time. He never slumbers. He never sleeps. Praise God. And you can talk to Him any time. And He loves to hear from you. Yes. Praise God. Because you're His children. Amen. It's just like one of ours called in 2 o'clock in the morning and said, Dad, I want to just tell you something. Boy, I'd be scared to death. I just love you. Boy, would that be something? And, and that's what God will do to you when you're fearful, when you're frightened, when you feel like you're all alone, and you're laying there, and, 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 and you're meditating on something good. And that's the Word of God. And it just, peace comes over you. Boy, you say, that's all right. Everything's going to be all right. In 149 there, he, he, it's kind of, he begs God to hear him. He begs God to hear his voice. And that's all right to beg God. You, you just ask him. Just, all that is is asking God, begging him or pleading with him. All these things. But he begs God to hear his voice. And he says, Lord, quicken me. And we, we think about that quicken. It is, it is saved. It, it is saved in most things. Quicken is saved. But a lot of times he's saved, but he, or he's quickened. Maybe he needs saved. 
He needs a Savior. He needs somebody out there to, to save him from a situation that he's in. And so we've got one that'll do that, and that's God. He says, stir me up that I, that which is good. Stir yes. me up to it that's good. And he said, God is good, Gene. The Word says it over and over and over and over again, that God is good. Yes. And therefore, He will be good to me, and He'll be good to you. You said, yeah, but I struggle. Well, that's all right. It's just a struggle with his own flesh. He said, you're going to suffer. We all going to suffer some, and, and, but he said it'll be all right. He says, God, give thanks for it. Praise God. And sometimes now I've got to thank God just thinking that I can get tired. I get worn a little bit because there was a time there in trouble. And I just want to get out and do something, and I couldn't. And you've been there too. And boy, when you get out and, and can't work and want to do something, then when you get where you can, you say, I don't want to do that anyway. But it's, that's all right. At least you, you let him try it. And we thank God. My wife and I sometimes thank God that we get tired. Thank God we get tired. And worn. I need, he says, and he knows what I need and what is good for me. Yes. Most of that I ask for along the way is not good for me, but he knows what's good for me. And he is give me that that's good for me. There's some things, and that's, that's the leaders of Christ, that's spiritual things that we're talking about, that we grow in grace, that we're, we're growing in Christ, that we can look to Him and depend on Him. And this thing to meditate, to study, to pray, is a godly course that we're on as Christians that will benefit us more than we can ever imagine in this life if we would just heed to what God's teaching us, read it, study it, know it, praise God, along the way that you said, I got, I don't want to proclaim it. Well, you proclaim it to yourself. Proclaim it to others the way you live, the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you carry yourself, the way you do business. Praise God. Do that. Upon God's judgment, listen, he's talking about that is his wisdom. See, God's wisdom is judgment. And there's not a day goes by that I don't have to ask God for wisdom in my life. Because I need his wisdom. Because I give a lot of different things out sometimes that, that, that bothers me. That you're not wise and you have to get to the point you say, God, is this what you'd have in my life? Is this what we need to do? And I thank God that we can get settled in some things and whatever comes or goes, we've made a decision and it's the right. And this psalmist, I'm telling you, he was so close to God. And he wanted so much to stay in the Word, to eat that Word, to digest that Word, to live that Word and do that Word. And Psalms 150 there, 151, he says this, he's talking about here the psalmist was fearful for his life. He was, he was afraid. That's just human. You know, we're afraid. Sometimes we get afraid. But the enemy was coming, and, and he knew the enemy was coming. And you say, well, he's not coming around the house. Well, he yet, he will. It's just a matter of time what the enemy will come. It's that doubt. It's that fear. It's that attitude. It's a lot of things, that thing that we don't understand. And, and, and the enemy's here. He's talking about, listen, they, they were cruel. They followed out the mischief. They went after those to hurt. These are the enemies of God. Was the psalmist enemies also because he was with God? See, someday, sometimes, along the way, they're always out to hurt. They're always out to, to, to hurt those that follow Jesus. If you don't believe it, look at it now. Look at it years ago, but look at it today. I mean, in Africa, they was, I was reading something, an article sometime back, that in one township there, they, was, they had killed 3,500 Christians last year, this past year. 3,500. They, they, they tortured them. They killed them. They burnt their churches. They burnt their houses. They killed some of their families. They did that. Because why? Because it's Christians. Yes. And that's just in Africa in one place. And worldwide, we've got missionaries all over the world, praise God. And some of them are being persecuted back. Oh, yes. Thank God those come, got to come out, those 15 or 17 or what there was. See, that's of God. What about these others? That's of God, too. Yes. We don't know. Mm -hmm. 3,500 in a township, that's a lot of, a lot of Christians. Yes. They was after all of them. 
and they're after us now through the politics and the laws and, 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 and these things of killing babies and all these things is out there. But they're killing like wildfire, the Christians, the one that follows Christ. See, we don't know nothing about that yet, but we may. You know, you can't never tell. We, we may. I pray we never do, but listen, a lot of them now, they can't they can't go to the church, they can't read the word, they can't be taught, you know, because it was it's a death sentence. And see, these that do that, that persecute and, and kill, these are four from the law he's talking about. They have no conviction. They're cruel. They're evil. Their hearts have been serious, and they're in, in trouble with God. Yes. But they're, they're doing evil. See, oftentimes, we get earnest in our prayer. When the need is so great, when the pain is so severe, we get serious. We get serious. When the enemy is at the door and he's fixing to come in, sometimes, listen, we get serious with God. God, I can't do this. I can't handle this. And all of this, a lot of times, most of the time, not all the time we can, but God can. He always can. So nothing is too big for God. Nothing is too much. He says here, sometimes we, we have to wrestle for prayer, for a blessing. Maybe like Jacob did with the angel. You know, he had to wrestle. But when he got through, and the angel says, let me go, and he says, not till you bless me. And he blessed him. He won't let me right on, but he, he praised God. He blessed him. He knew he had been with the yes. angel. He knew he, he had been with God, and he got some things right. I mean, no, he saw out there, it wasn't a threat to him. I mean, he could face him head on then. Yes. Sure, he wanted to divide up his spoils, all that, so, you know, for his family's sake. Yes. Praise God, he had that. When he met him face to face, what they do? They run each other and hug their necks and kiss each other. That's God. You see, there's a worry. And when God left from over there, I mean, Jacob left from where he was, God told him it's time to go home. And I'm sure that came to mind. I said, ooh, my brother said, if I come home, he's going to kill me. And he was. But God. Thank God. Remember, God is true. He can handle any situation. You, you remember, I thought about uh, Hannah when she went there to pray. She didn't have a child, but she wanted one. And boy, she prayed with her. She poured it all out to God. I mean, she was just, a, she was praying and in all prayer. And remember that it's, it's all I want is a child. It's all I want is a child. And God gave her desire. She didn't give her the desire. And she said, I'll give it back to you. Boy, I think about that a lot of times. After he, not when she took him back down there. Well, that would do a lot. But she could see him what was to you. She'd take a little coach up back down there. Little fellow, but he's right there where he needed to be. Because God began to speak to him when he's just a child. Yes. All that prayer meant something. It means something for us. And our, our mamas and daddies and everybody prayed for us along the way. Somebody <coughs> prayed for me and thank God yes. along the way. And one picture too, he pulls it out this morning. All his commandments are true. His covenant, his word, God commanded to a thousand just generations. His commandment, his covenant, is true. His promises are founded forever. I have known of old, from the days of his youth, he said, I've known. Ever since he looked at to the word, praise God, the psalmist knew and followed God and trusted God and walked with Him. We find Him, praise God, we find Him, we find God always. We stumble and fail and He picks up and dusts us off and we go a little ways and we do it again. He's just saying, the Israelites, they would just be in a frenzy and, 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 and they need God, here He was. The judgment punishment had to come along the way, but ultimately He was always heard of. He always heard. Be always there for him. At this time, they said, we don't want you here. We don't want one of that. That's so judgment has to come. And that's the way it is with us a lot of times. We say we can do it ourselves. This is we can. But God can. The psalmist knew it. And I pray that we can know it in these days. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the precious word of God. We thank you, Lord, that we can look at it. We can open our understanding. And we can receive something that benefits us. For all of this journey down here, Lord, we pray for those. And 
authority. We pray for those, uh, our nation, our country, our leaders. We pray God that you, and that God will be upon them. Lord, that you touch and minister. Be with each one here today, each family, each one. God touch and bless you in Jesus' name.